Well, I am in the kitchen with Joelle and we are at Smithberry Barn. And Joelle, this is a great time of year for baking apples. And it's really a very simple process. You've got a couple of different ways to do it. So let's jump right in. All right. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a single serving apple, a baked apple. You don't have to just make one, okay. but you can. <laughs> um, today we're going to make one, but this is a special um, apple baking dish that we sell here in our store made locally by a local artisan. Nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to core out the center. So I have my handy apple coring tool. And I have to say, this looks different than my apple core at home. This is a new kind of design, isn't it? A little bit it? fancy. Yeah. So you, it's very sharp and sturdy, which we like. Um, and then once you're finished with it, you just pop it open and out a comes the core. A lot easier than using your finger trying to get them out of those old ones, which I've done. <laughs> and then it sets right on that little dimple in the nice. bottom so it doesn't fall over and you can fill it with your topping. Uh -huh. And so today our topping is, um, you can mix your topping, you can do any, basically you can do anything you want. Okay. Um, today we're going to do some brown sugar, some oats, some hazelnuts, a little bit of cinnamon, and then we're going to add some crystallized Ooh, ginger. That, that's a new one, huh? Yeah, <laughs> which I've chopped up here, and so we'll add that And you sell the crystallized it. ginger at Smithsonian Barn as well. We do, yes. We sell the cinnamon, the ginger. Um, and you can really go all out because you have like uh, some uh, dried cranberries there. Things do. like that work as well. We have some really great great local dried cranberries nice. and so whatever you either have in your pantry or whatever sounds good to you that you want to mix together um, it's pretty foolproof and so we're just tossing the ingredients and how does it smell it smells delicious the trick is to get it in the center you can also core a little bit more I just did one uh, one time through but you could do it a couple of times to make that hole a little bit bigger okay get more topping in that way and then pack it down a little bit falling around the edge is fine it, and they're beautiful too that's what I love about baked apples the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of butter on the top of it actually that's not the last thing we're going to do because I forgot about our cider um, you oh. want to have a little bit of moisture in the bottom of it um, so that that can help with the baking. And usually you would use water, but I think the apple cider is a great idea. Exactly. So this time of year when we have the fresh apple cider, yep. might as well use it. You can also use water, but we like the cider. It's a little bit more flavorful. So just a little bit in the bottom. And then that's going to go into the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. It depends a little bit on the variety. Today we used Honeycrisp. Uh -huh. They bake really well. They're great for fresh eating. It's one of everyone's favorite apples. Um, certainly good for whatever you want to use it for. And how would you tell then? Do you like stick a fork in it if they're really tender? You stick a fork done? in it. Nice. Yep. nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get that into the oven. We're actually going to make another one as well, a different style of baked okay. apple. And so we'll put them in the oven together. Nice. Now, this, this looks even easier to me. This is even easier to me. Um, basically, what we've done is we've cored the apple, cut it in half, laid it flat open. You don't need any you know, special dishes or anything like that. Um, what we're doing special with this one is we're actually adding a little bit of our own farm jam on this. This is our raspberry rhubarb jam, so a little bit of dollop in the center of each apple. And you also have a, a low sugar? or we do. A low, Yeah, yep. that's we a have a really one. good low sugar one if you're trying to keep the you know, sugar content. This is a really healthy dessert, really, yeah. aside from a little bit of butter in the topping, but um, it's a great, healthy now, dessert. Now, I noticed that there seems to be two, uh, a core out, but a little circle also. How'd you do that? Right, so I just took a little melon baller and I scooped a little bit of extra out of the center so that we would have a okay. little bigger well for the ingredients yeah. there. And then this is our crisp topping. So we're, we're making basically a, an apple crisp without doing all the oh, slicing okay. and cutting. Um, so we have all of our ingredients for the apple crisp. We have some oats, um, almost the same as our other topping, but a little bit of flour in there to hold it all together and a little bit more butter. So you're gonna add the butter to that. And all of this goes in? All of that goes in. And then you've gotta tell them about what you have in your hand there because that is such a cool thing that you actually sell here at the store. So we're going to be doing some fresh nutmeg and we have our micro plane type uh, grater and we just grate the fresh nutmeg right into that. And the great thing about that, Joel, is this kind of nutmeg lasts, I mean, you're probably going to have to use and use and use to use it up. It does last a really long time, but it's the best, freshest it is. flavored the nutmeg. It is. delightful. You can't beat it. So then we're going to take our Are pastry you gonna make blender. Me do this? You're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to test you and see how you do. I need a, am I failing or nope, succeeding? No, you look good. <laughs> you can tap a little bit of that butter off and keep going. And this really is just a basic topping for apple crisp. 
you can do this in your Cuisinart. I didn't feel like messing up the Cuisinart and you know running that motor, but yeah. um, it's easy enough to do it this way. Now let me finish mixing this up and we're gonna be right back. Sounds good. Now that, that looks great. I'm assuming that's ready to go we're, on top of them. We're ready to go, so we're just gonna start. I like this because it's almost like an individual apple crisp. It is, we would serve these individually with a uh, scoop of ice cream is the best way. A little bit of apple cider there to help with our steaming, just like we did with the other one. A little bit falling off is fine. We can scoop it up at the end and drizzle it over the top. Okay, well let's finish these up and uh, we'll be right back. So Joelle, these absolutely look delicious. How long were they in the oven for? About 30 minutes. We tested them with a fork and they're nice and soft and crisp on the top and ready to eat. And then this is a great example of if you wanted a single serving, these dishes work so great, whether for yourself or for like a specific fancy dinner. Exactly. And then the multiple ones in a, in right. a, in a baking dish. Right, it's just an dish. easier way to do it. You yeah. don't have to have special tools. And you have, you have a lot of varieties of apples growing here, don't you? We do. We have about 20 different kinds of apples and about five uh, varieties of pears. Wow. They start in August and go all the way through late October. Uh, we pick when they're ready, you know, we pick, they're ready when we decide yeah. that they're ready, and so it varies depending on the variety. And that is such a great thing, because that's on your website, exactly. which is... Smithberrybarn.com. I love that, because, you know, sometimes every year it's a little different. They, they get ripe at different times, so it's a great thing to do. There will also be uh, certain varieties that we don't have this year that yeah. didn't produce well, or the timing's a little bit off. We also um, do a, a handout that tells you what we recommend each of the varieties be used for, and then a little bit of um, just tips and tricks nice. and how to buy them and what to use them for, easy snacks for kids, things like that. Well, it seems like every time we come out to Smithbury Barn, we, we walk away with one more delicious dish that we get to prepare. So thank you so much, Joelle. For more information, go to gardenland.tv. We'll click you over to their website.